Welcome to Growing to Give's first virtual event, our Paint the Farm auction. In the last few months, we've had a number of artists, over 20, visit the farm and choose their spot to capture what they feel is the essence of Growing to Give. And now we are launching the auction where you will be able to bid on these glimpses of this beautiful farm for uh, the benefit of both the artists and for Growing to Give. We are excited to share our work of growing organic, fresh vegetables to share with our neighbors in need here in the Brunswick area. My name is Christine Sloan. I'm a member of the board of directors of Growing to Give. Today, um, we are celebrating the auction, but we are also celebrating the success of the farm. With this video, you will be able to tour this beautiful farm, meet the founders, learn about the garden work and some of the people that make that work possible and benefit from this food. In the first three years, we grew nearly 40,000 pounds of fresh organic produce to distribute in our community. This year, our fourth year, we are on target to produce 1,000 pounds of produce harvested each week. Part of our mission has been to work closely with volunteers in our community to share both the issues of food insecurity, but also the excitement of responsible growing practices that are good for both the land and for the people. But this pandemic has really dramatically impacted our work. Not only has the need increased tremendously in our area here in Maine, but the things that brought people to the farm, large groups of school students, churches, families, and other organizations have had to be slowed way down for their protection, including the events that we've had to raise money for our work. Normally, we have three events in the summer and fall bringing large crowds of people to this beautiful farm here in Brunswick. And we celebrate through music, we celebrate through great food that's home cooked from our gardens. And we look again at the beauty of property that raises food and the need to make sure everyone has access to such healthy food. So, what are we going to do if we can't have those big parties? Our answer has been seedling sales in the spring. It's also included a wonderful pick your own bouquet garden that started here this summer. And the art auction, which involved over 20 artists here in our community that have come to the farm and captured our story to share with you. After the tour, you'll be able to visit uh, the website of the auction and learn more from the artists about how they chose their spot to paint and see all of the different paintings that you'll be able to bid on. In addition, we have recipes from our chef and gardener Theda and drink recipes and recommended wines for summer dining. So please enjoy this tour and the auction which will run throughout this week. My name is Martha Baum. Um, I'm an artist and I'm here today to represent all of the artists who have contributed to this wonderful art auction at Growing to Give Farm. A little bit about myself. I live in Bath, Maine. I've lived there since 2008 and I have a home and a studio. I split my time between 
painting uh, around town and down the adjacent beautiful peninsulas and also working in my studio. Um, although my major focus is on water and boats, uh, islands, um, lately I've been very interested in inland scenes such as farms, farm animals, uh, orchards, and berry picking. So since I moved to Bath, um, I've made friends with a number of people who are very, very uh, interested and concerned in food insecurity and about food insecurity in Maine and they're all active in different movements and organizations to, to help solve this problem. Um, I also, um, it pulls on my heartstrings personally because when I moved to Maine I uh, spent a few years volunteering with Big Sisters, Little Sisters and and witnessed the pain of a young family um, that I was working with who were in and out of hunger and food insecurity um, on a regular basis. So when my friend Rebecca McConaughey, who works at Growing to Give Farm, um, offered me the opportunity to paint a painting for the, uh, for the auction, I was thrilled to do it. And I'm sure all the other artists feel the same. I was personally inspired by Einstein, this goat in, in, in the painting, but there's lots of other beautiful scenes on the farm. Um, I had a chance to look at the art, um, some of the art that the other artists have produced, and there are gorgeous uh, pieces of, of produce and the environs, one lovely piece of the whole farm, um, and of course lots of takes on the goats. So. Um, Take a look, um, enjoy what you're looking at. I hope that you can find something nice to put on your wall at home and you can feel just great about um, donating and contributing to all the wonderful things that are done here at Growing to Give Farm. My name's John Newlin. I'm one of the co-founders of Growing to Give, and uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit uh, about the history of the farm. Uh, first, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that the land that this farm is part of is uh, was Abenaki land, the land of the Abenaki people, probably for thousands of years. Uh, fast forwarding to last century, uh, this land was uh, part of the Two Echo Dairy Farm uh, that operated in this area for many years. And then in 2002, uh, my wife Patty and I and our two kids moved here and we started uh, building what was uh, for many years essentially a, a hobby farm here uh, while we had non-farm jobs and while we raised a family. Then uh, uh, during the uh, next few years we uh, hosted quite a few what I guess you might call neighborhood farm parties here and uh, over time this farm sort of gradually became somewhat of a community farm uh, in some ways at least. Uh, then in 2013 um, I actually retired from my work as, a, as, as an educator and uh, started working on the climate change issue and uh, while I did policy work for a couple of years, by 2015, I'd shifted my focus to increasing vegetable production on the farm and doing so in a climate-friendly way. Fast forward two more years, and Patty and our dear friend Theda Leiden and I uh, joined forces to create a, a nonprofit organization that would donate all of that vegetable production to local food pantries and other food access sites. Now, uh, three years later, uh, due largely to the work of an amazing group of volunteers and partners, uh, we're at a place where uh, we'll soon be able to produce and grow, or produce and donate to the local pantries over 20,000 pounds of food each year. Uh, uh, no, nowhere near a complete solution, of course, to the to the food insecurity problem but it makes a real difference here in the local area. Um, we also seem to have done a pretty good job of growing a sense of community here at the same time and uh, we hope to continue that work and expand it as well uh, including uh, redoubling our efforts to reach out to the new Mainer and other Mainers of Color communities 
uh, that we can connect with. So we look forward to doing that. I'm Theda Leiden. I'm the farm manager here at Growing to Give. With Rebecca, Adele, and myself, we've managed over a hundred volunteers, interns, and woofers, and this has enabled us to be able to donate 7,000 pounds of food so far this season. So we implement an intensive farming method, and at this point in time, we're um, farming a little over a half an acre. Um, the farm has expanded from just a few plots to the 20 plus plots that we have now. This, uh, this farming method enables us to continually plant throughout the season. Almost all of the plots here have had two or three different vegetables grown within one growing season. The, the greenhouse that we have and the two tunnels enable us to be able to put food out into the system early in March and into late November. These are great examples of plots that have already had three different um, vegetables grown in them. This plot that we're looking at now had lettuce and it also had hakori turnips and now it has zucchini and red clover is our cover crop that will last throughout the winter and protect the soil. Behind me you'll see what we call nooks and crannies of interesting plantings. These are to attract beneficials and also we really like flowers so it's an excuse for us to grow a lot of flowers. This year we're doing a pick your own bouquet, another excuse to grow flowers. Um, but you'll see as you look around the farm, we have lots of different interesting um, things that uh, attract people and attract questions from people. And when we have volunteers come, that's something that I think hooks them because it's just not your normal zucchini, tomato, and cucumber. Um, so we also are trying this year, um, we're trying to grow sweet potatoes. Well, we are growing sweet potatoes in a tunnel. And this is our first year of doing that. And we've also learned there's a byproduct, something that we have never tried to eat before, and that's sweet potato greens. So the sweet potato greens are actually really delicious and nutritious. And we're sending those to Midcoast Hunger Prevention, which then sends them on to New Mainers. Um, so that was a connection we made pre-COVID, hoping that they would be able to, our new Mainers would be able to come and work at the farm because many of them have farming backgrounds. But because of the pandemic, that hasn't happened this year. Um, but the pandemic did have a silver lining for us. And that was the fact that we were an essential business and it attracted a lot of volunteers to the farm this year. People that we normally wouldn't have had because um, they would be working. These people were able to come because they were either unemployed or working from home and wanted to get out of their houses and, and out of their apartments. So we've met a really incredible group of people this year that want to give back and that, that's our silver lining. Uh, we call this our Sea of Greens. Um, when we started out, we asked recipients what it was that they wanted us to grow for them, what vegetables they were familiar with and that they would use. Um, I have never grown kale before because the pantries always said they had way too much kale, the recipients didn't eat kale. But this year, talking to um, one of the heads of the pan food pantries, he told me that anything that they could cook, anything that they could cook and put away for the winter. So that's why we're doing um, the kale. Um, because they will steam it and freeze it for winter when the pantries are running low on fresh vegetables. Um, Swiss chard is a favorite and we've won over a lot of people with Swiss chard. A little garlic, olive oil, salt and pepper. Uh, it's really delicious and easy to prepare. So we send that out every week. So we're standing in part of our new expansion. We had plans this year to expand by 30%. But with the pandemic, we felt we, like we really needed to make an impact to help people. 
Um, there were going to be so many more people in need, people that needed to be fed. So we're actually working on a 50% expansion. Uh, this year we got uh, this area planted with um, spaghetti squash and a couple types of zucchini because they produced so much the first year that we thought it would be a good idea. And they also um, have a pretty uh, low harvest date so they don't take all season. So that's what's going on here. One of the interesting things that has happened this year also is that we have volunteers that are starting to take ownership of different aspects of the farm. And we have a woman named Abby who came to us this spring and she brought a carload of elderberry slips from her previous farm. We already had a couple of bushes. These are two years old. We already had a couple of bushes here in our beneficial hedgerow, but Abby supplied us with lots more and we plan to have a elderberry and aronia berry orchard. Uh, and Abby will um, give us a um, tutorial this fall on how to prepare the elderberry and make tinctures and syrups and that sort of thing. So that's pretty exciting. Another woman is really interested in tomatoes in the greenhouse. So every time she volunteers, I send her into the greenhouse to prune or pick or um, sucker the green, uh, the green, the uh, excuse me, the tomatoes. And another woman is very interested in the small amount of blueberry bushes that we have. So it's really kind of fun to see people come look at what they've, they've called their project and take ownership of it. And it's really um, helpful to us too because they research and then they share information with us. So we're up here on Squash Hill. Squash Hill got its name because this um, area is only two years old and this is our second growing season here. The first growing season was, it got finished a little bit late in the summer. So we decided to get the most bang out of our buck and plant zucchini and winter squashes. Well, the zucchini was taller than we were and the gleaners were not happy with us because it was a jungle. Um, and that's a joke because they were very happy with us about all the produce that we um, were able to harvest out of here. But um, we grow amaranth, um, this one is called um, uh, Coral Fountain. Uh, we have some different quinoa that we tried this year. And this is mostly is to feed the goldfinch because the goldfinch attack our beet greens and our Swiss chard. And they go for that red color. Um, so we're trying to feed them so they'll leave the other vegetables alone. Um, this uh, area is now starting to be sown with cover crops, believe it or not, already. It's, it's coming to the end of the growing season. So we're trying to protect our soil and we're trying to nurture the soil. The, the thing that you want to do is to never leave your soil exposed through the winter. So we have, as we're pulling crops out, we're interplanting with cover crops and uh, winter wheat. Um, and from this area and all the areas of the farm, we've been harvesting three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And we do that with the relationship we have with the three different gleaning groups. And we wouldn't be able to do it without them. They come early in the morning, they help us harvest, we weigh, we distribute, and almost all the produce is picked and within hours at its destination. <laughs> I'm Kelly Wallace and I am a volunteer here at Growing to Give. I've been doing it for just this year, starting in May, and um, I think I came to the organization via one of the partner organizations, the main, um, the Midcoast Hunger Prevention Program, uh, which is a recipient of a lot of the great food that's grown here. And uh, I think, you know, seeing it from its start to its end has just been really rewarding. Uh, seeing the clients that um, receive all this beautiful produce that's made here. Um, you know, one of the big draws um, for me to be here is the fact that, you know, people in need are getting this produce that's grown here in our soil. Um, you know, working also at a food bank as a volunteer, you know, seeing this super fresh local produce that goes out to 
the the neighbors that are in need and knowing that you know it's just from a few miles up the road and that it's the freshest um, that they're going to get in this uh, city. I think that is probably the most inspiring reason to be out here and and to do all the weeding and all the watering and all the um, picking of of the plants. Um, I think that's a, a big motivation for me to be here. But also getting a chance to learn from the staff members um, about the place we live and, and different farming methods and uh, just it's a great place to hang out on a Saturday morning. Kelly Davis, the coordinator for the Merry Meeting Gleaners, which is a project of the Merry Meeting Food Council. Um, the gleaners partner with farms to harvest their surplus produce and we donate it to partner agencies throughout the community that are serving people that are food insecure. Um, we've been working with Growing to Give since 2017 and the relationship with Growing to Give is a little different than it is with the commercial farms because they're a food bank farm, everything they grow is donated. So our gleaners are actually their harvesters, um, which has been a really rewarding experience for our volunteers that come here and um, learn so much about the process of growing organic food. So the produce that we glean from Growing to Give is donated to uh, dozens of organizations throughout the Mary Meeting Bay area and um, the impact on the people receiving the food is um, is remarkable. Um, it allows people that could otherwise maybe only afford canned produce or no produce at all to now be able to experience um, what it's like to have organic fresh produce in their diet. Um, so it's really, it can be really life-changing for people. So there are three gleaning organizations that work with Growing to Give, um, Mary Meeting Gleaners, Cumberland County Gleaners, and Andrus Goggin Gleaners. Um, Mary Meeting Gleaners glean here twice a week, six or seven months out of the year. Last year, Growing to Give donated over 17,000 pounds of produce just in that, that six or seven month period. We have um, a team of volunteers that comes out every Wednesday and Friday. They have team leaders that oversee the process and um, help any new volunteers that have maybe never worked on a farm before. And once they've harvested what they're going to harvest for the day, then everything is weighed and recorded so that we can report back to, um, back to the farm how much they've donated. And it's all sorted and organized so that each organization that's receiving produce is receiving a mixture of produce. Um, now this year with COVID-19, it's become even a little more challenging because we're now bagging the vegetables so that um, each organization will receive a box that's full of bags of mixed vegetables. And then when they receive it, they can then easily pass it on to their clients with as little food handling as possible. Or it might go onto a sharing table where people from the community can just come and take a bag um, without having to handle the food. So there's been some new challenges this year, but the volunteers have handled it really well. Um, I think, I believe I started getting um, food boxes from FCS, I think about a year ago, um, just to kind of help supplement the food. And it was so nice to get something other than um, canned in box items, but to get some fresh organic produce, um, which was a huge, it's a huge staple in my house. Um, I'm a mom of three, so I've got to have energy. I've got to keep going. The box stuff doesn't cut it. <laughs> um, and to get fresh produce in a box is um, definitely so much better than getting a ton of produce that's been picked over in the store um, as well as in FCS and then you have to pick through and you got to cut off and 
by the time you are prepared to make a meal, it's like, oh gosh, there's nothing left. Um, but when it's all fresh and organic, it's really nice to make a nice full meal out of food. It's excellent. Our access through Growing to Give is with Freeport Community Services. Um, they help supplement the meals in my household, which is me, uh, my boyfriend, and my three children, um, through food boxes on occasion. And I absolutely love the fresh greens so that I can make salads, the tomatoes, the carrots, um, all kinds of things that I would typically buy in the grocery store, um, but sometimes that's just not possible with the way things are. Um, so it's really nice to get those fresh organic produce from Freeport Community Services and have Growing to Give um, as a supplier for them. I didn't know at the time um, that Growing to Give was a part of Freeport Community Services. Um, in fact, I believe when my aunt started here, my aunt Melissa, she had mentioned it, asked if I had any ideas. Um, I definitely had mentioned that Freeport Community Services produce was lacking <laughs> at best, um, often very picked through. Um, and so that was an excellent resource for her as well. And then it wasn't until after the fact that I had started calling them to say, hey, I just need a little bit to supplement. Um, so that's what they provided. Hello, I'm Toby Tarpinian from Morning Glory Natural Foods in downtown Brunswick, and this is Susan Tarpinian. And uh, we are happy to be business sponsors of the Growing to Give Farm. One of our business's initial missions was to get organic, clean food out to the, the community of Brunswick. And um, Growing to Give seemed like a very aligned idea of getting Mofka certified organic produce out to people that are in need and that are hungry in our community. And so again, we are proud to be one of the many business sponsors here at the Growing to Give Farm. It's a beautiful farm and it's a great idea and it's, it's so pleasant to be here. Come on out and check it out because you'll love it. Thank you. We hope you have enjoyed this tour and the opportunity to meet many of the people who make this project at Growing to Give work so successfully. Behind every donor, volunteer, and worker are a score of other people who make this place hum throughout the summer. I feel like I'm in a garden of paintings. Please go to the auction and learn more about each of our artists and the paintings and artwork that they have contributed. There are over 43 pieces of art that you can bid on. There are also wonderful other aspects of the site, a live portion as well as a donation button. And the beautiful gift basket that you saw earlier will be won by one of the many people who donate throughout this week. Thank you again for attending our tour and for supporting Growing to Give.